Now in this episode we're going to look at flat greens and how you can make those interesting. Now as you might recall from the last episode we looked at green sites and I think one of the key things if you've got a flattish green site you've really got to be allowing the player to use the ground. If it's elevated, let's say we'd had a green up here, well it's less likely that you're asking the player to run the ball in. If you think about the angle of the balls to centres hitting into an upslope it's just not going to run up there as much. This is really suited for a high lofted club like a wedge or a 9-iron or it can work really nicely for a par 5 where you're saying if you're getting on in 2 you're under regulation. Whereas a flat green site you're really giving the player the way you make that interesting is ask the player to bounce it in for me. So I've marked out a site and in order to bounce it in we'll think about the club you want. A wedge typically doesn't bounce and release. I think if you're looking at a longer club well what gets more interesting is if I land it here where does it finish if I land it here where does it finish those sorts of questions I think are infinitely more interesting and probably the main reason why I design longer holes and prefer designing those um, so here we've marked out an approach shot that's say 216 yards and that's working back from this green site which I really like it's on a little bit of a plateau so you can see it's kind of falling off in this direction but you've got a high area here you've got a little bit of a collection area here if you go too far left but generally this is the flat portion of the land but still a little bit raised and this is all natural we haven't done anything to it yet so the first thing I want to do is envisage that approach shot how do I view it and see it being I guess interesting I think for me the land is tilting the ball subtly to the right so you've got a couple of options you could make the green go that way and really encourage people to work it in. That could work quite nicely. I actually think in this one I'm going to do the opposite and make it so that if you're working it from, if you're using this slope, you've got to be quite, you're kind of coming at the green a bit more side on. There's no real reason for that. I just think it's an interesting shot to ask people to play. And sometimes that can be the best place to start going, well, what's my natural inclination and then going against that. So we're going to pop, pop down a green shape and see whether I like it or not. And then you go back to here and think does that look too wide, too narrow? For me that's way too wide. I, I'm If I'm doing this as say a par 5, which I think I'm envisaging this as, then that's going to be really easy to hold. I kind of want this so we're going to get rid of these markers for now because that didn't go the way I intended it to. So let's draw it relatively long. Hmm. Let's go 22 and like 16 or so. So we're going more down this axis now. And so if we draw out our green shape however roughly And you can start seeing how we've angled this green is going to make this an infinitely more interesting shot. Because if you are approaching the screen and bouncing it on, well, if the ball's kicking this way, you're hitting towards the narrow of the green. So it's giving people an option. Do they want to try and draw a ball against the slope and work up the green? That would work quite nicely. Or do they want to play the land and try to hit this slope and run it on? And if so, you're going to have to be really precise. Let's say the pin's here. We're going to have to be precise with both distance and direction to ensure that it's getting on and it's giving you a good look. But if you're getting on, you're probably having a pretty good look at birdie. So, I think the first point of note with a flat green site is really take care of what's around it and make sure that what's around the green site is going to make sense with the green that you're drawing. So we've got this. Now I'm going to nick this waypoint for the moment just so that the green slopes show up. Now let's move this one as well just for the sake of it. And you can start seeing that there's already some really nice slopes on here and lesson number two with this would be try to preserve those where at all possible. Um, we're going to make the second surface fairway because I'm presuming around here would be all fairway. So we're not actually going to get into that much of sloping on the green in this episode. What I want to look at is the importance of a flat green is how the land in front of the green works. So you kind of want to see any features you can and work out 
if they're perfect as they are or if you want to enhance them a little bit. Now immediately you might not be seeing this but there's this little area here. Now I think it's actually purely the grass tone that's doing it. There's no... but it, my mind is kind of envisioning a mound there. So let's have a look at if we just raise this using our fuzzy brush just a little and then take it somewhere else. Let's see how that looks and how that might... Now straight away that one little mound is going to impact how you can get to this flag because it's going to kick the ball different directions particularly if we make it fairway. So you're asking the player here well here's a tiny hazard, it's like a half hazard if you want to call it that. Do they want to shoot the gap and try to land it here but you're risking running off the green a bit more? Or do they want to try to bounce over it or do they want to curve it in this way and avoid it and one little feature like that I might work the rest of the green off so I'm now thinking well the approach I'm asking you either go over this and therefore what happens if you miss well this was already a bit of a runoff anyway let's exacerbate that so again we're taking that fuzzy brush we're not doing huge amounts to the land and we're just lowering that so that if you're missing left of this you're probably ending up in a little hollow and the rest of the green naturally flowed this way anyway so that depends how severe we want to be but a chip up here to a green that then runs away could be tricky well looking at that and we're saying basically your golden area to land the ball in is somewhere around about here so we want to leave that unimpeded but we then want to think about well, what if you miss that the land's already running off down here I don't think I need to do too much there could put a bunker there if I wanted to that would punish a long right miss a bit more but honestly there's also a little mound here that I quite like so I'm gonna raise this up and maybe that houses that bunker one further comment on when you're creating bunkers and things like this you're gonna to want to make the rest of the land around the bunker look like that bunker belongs so with this we don't want it to look just like we've raised up the land to put a bunker there and everything around it's dead flat that just doesn't really work so you'll notice every time I'm creating a bunker or something like this well it's can we create other hills around it that are going to kind of give this a little bit of logic so if the whole land is dead flat it's not necessarily making it as much sense but if we're making everything else giving it little rises and falls maybe this makes a bit more sense than it did so that's an option. What you'll notice that's also done by bringing this into the green this way and not having the hill just stop at the edge of the green which would make no sense we've got a bit of a backstop that we can use. So if I'm now thinking about where do I cut my fairway well I'm gonna want in front of this to be fairway texture because I want it to be a runoff. I, don't, I want around this mound I've got to make a decision of whether I want this mound to be fairway or not and I want to make a decision of whether I protect this landing area or not. If I'm saying that this is my ideal landing spot well do we want to put a bunker around about here maybe so that you've got to so suddenly although the pins there you're at, and it looks like it's guarded by nothing actually this bunker way short that's coming into play potentially if it's downwind you're going to want to land the ball way short and therefore this bunker comes into play a bit more. I might, one final thing I might do would be, well let's ramp up that slope just a little. So as you can see we've got a bit more of a gradual slope which means you're going to have to land the ball slightly higher up this slope in order to get out that pin because if you're, because the land's all moving this way, if you're landing it here it's probably ending up down here somewhere. So I guess my point with flat greens is always going to be what can you do with the land around them. Now we could do different things, we could put a kicker slope and we'll look at those kind of more in depth later to help you. We haven't really touched the green, this is all about surrounds and I would always build it off what's your approach shot, what does the land do, how can you make that interesting. But I think if I were hitting, let's say we were making this a little longer, so we want, we're on 7 if we're playing from here, Let's just picture that shot and see what we're what we're asking the player to do. 
Now, it's obviously nowhere close, but I think it's clear that hitting five wood here actually probably isn't the play. You're going to go through, and we'd want to think about, well, what's the danger long? Maybe it's the green sloping all the way this way and this way. But really, you are asking the player to try to run the ball in from here if you possibly can. We'd obviously sort that slope out, make that run off a little less severely. But try to think about how you'd approach a pin here. How would you approach a pin here? How would you do the one one here? Here. Don't come up your pin positions just yet. But when you're building a green, try to think about whether the approach is going to play differently to different parts of the green. That's part of our angles. So going to a back pin here. Well, I'm actually going to be asking the player to do the opposite of the front pin. Opposite the front pin, we're asking to land here and roll it out. This way, we're seeing them. Can you land it almost on top of the mound and roll it round if you want to get really close? But it's infinitely more interesting than just aim at, aim at a flag, shoot, hit perfect tempo. If you're looking at how the ball reacts, generally your course is going to get much more interesting. Particularly if you factor in wind. Well, how does this play if the wind's coming off the right, off the left, downwind, into the wind? That's for me why when these sorts of greens really come alive. Now we'll look at this green in a little bit more detail in terms of interior contouring in a second. And that will be our next episode. But I hope this one helps and gives you some ideas of green surrounds and green complexes. And really, even when the site is flat, how just a few, one tiny little mound can give you something to really work off and make it a bit more interesting. I hope this helps. See you next time.